We're going to be joined in a moment here by Dr. Raymond Peets, um, who's an expert uh, physiologist, uh, chemist, research scientist. Uh, and we're going to be hearing from Dr. Raymond Peet about some uh, helpful things to do to counter any potential radioactive spread to this country. Uh, it was probably earlier in the week uh, that I first started uh, finding some uh, internet-based uh, evidence to show that the uh, spread of uh, radiation from the steam leaked from the plant uh, subsequent to uh, the explosions, the hydrogen explosions on the, the actual uh, buildings, not the containment vessel for the reactor, but the buildings that housed uh, all of the uh, reactor and all the machinery. That, that steam uh, was laden with uh, things like iodine-131 uh, and cesium uh, isotopes and that these had been released in the steam cloud uh, as the engineers desperately tried to lower the pressure by allowing the steam from the reactor to leave uh, so it didn't cause any further breakdown of the containment vessel which would certainly result in fairly widespread and very damaging uh, radioactive release uh, and one of the uh, reactors number three the mixed oxide fuel reactor that contained the plutonium uh, six percent plutonium and 94 percent uranium uh, that would lead to a much more serious uh, environmental uh, damage if that was released Okay, so uh, we started coming out uh, on Wednesday, I think it was. I first started seeing some uh, spreading uh, clouds, as it were, in color, uh, showing a potential spread to the East Coast. And then the CTBTO uh, from Vienna uh, released information, and it became widespread public knowledge. It was no longer something that was on the fringes, uh, but fairly widespread public knowledge. And today, that was on Thursday, and today, on Friday, uh, quite a few government agencies have also... Uh, admitting this. So on Wednesday or Tuesday of last week they started saying that the uh, radioactive uh, components would be in the upper atmosphere spread by the jet stream moving east and uh, due to hit the Aleutian Islands on Thursday and then be on the west coast of America with uh, spread potentially from Oregon down to California. So yesterday I read the CTBO uh, report online and indeed this cloud was coming fairly close and was expected to make landfall by Friday. So funnily enough today in Sacramento, now the CTBTO is the uh, center, the, uh, re uh, basically the nuclear test ban treaty organization that uh, was set up to monitor the atmosphere for radioactive particles, isotopes, emissions from nuclear testing. Uh, there's a comprehensive test ban on nuclear explosions and these sites, there are 60 of them around the world, uh, and these sites actually measure radiation released from nuclear explosions. So the uh, ones in the Pacific were starting to det detect this and actually in Vienna. Uh, they released the information. I think it was, I don't know if it was a mole or an insider who just wanted to make sure that it got out because as well as radioactive uh, data, uh, the CTBTO collects geophysical information. So it's seismic activity, tsunami activity. And on top of that, the third thing they do is ma maintain and monitor any uh, radioactive uh, release as a telltale signature from nuclear explosions. Okay, so... They started picking this up, and then on Thursday it was released from Vienna, and they said on Friday it would be making landfall uh, in California. And actually today, uh, one of the CTBO stations based in Sacramento actually uh, recorded a very small, so although they're very small, they're present uh, uh, particles of iodine, I-131, I and so, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly real that what we have in the upper air jet stream and or coming down in the rain uh, is potentially going to uh, land here and that's something we should just be aware of at this point in time it's still i would i would safely say still fairly small but it's certainly coming this way all the time now it's made its first landfall from when it first started and the fires broke out on saturday or sunday of last week and so for the last five days, the uh, cloud trail has been coming east. So uh, I we're joined by Dr. Ray yeah, Pete exactly. I today, Dr. Pete and I, I, I want to introduce Dr. Pete and then also ask him um, from his sources if he believes it true that the uh, radioactive iodine has reached our our um, land yet. Um, it's probably uh, present in detectable amounts, but probably not yet uh, biologically. Uh, significant, but it could quickly become uh, concentrated enough to affect pregnant women, 
uh, because uh, the fetus concentrates uh, elements from the environment uh, oh, um, at least a hundred times faster than other tissues. And so uh, during the first two or three months after an accident like that, there will be uh, radioactive iodine, which would be concentrating in the embryo and fetus, uh, uh, other isotopes such as cesium and, and strontium uh, would uh, continue to be dangerous if they got into the food supply, but the radioactive iodine is one that's most crucial for uh, developing babies. So, um, Dr. Pete, we wanted to go over uh, and discuss what different foods and nutrients could help protect us from increasing levels if it does increase or more dangerous levels of radioactive iodine that may be present and or cesium and or strontium from this um, cloud that is coming over from Japan. And we wanted to go through the list of uh, different things that specifically can block those uh, radioactive particles as well as, in general, what nutrients are um, protective. Uh, the first principle is to... Um dilute the radioactive isotopes with uh, good, stable, or relatively stable isotopes. And so old food is best. Uh, the iodine radioactive isotope is practically all gone after three months after the production of it. Um, and the others uh, will eventually tend to wash down into the, the uh, ground and so the plants that grow in the first few months after an accident will uh, contain those isotopes. So if you uh, have canned food, uh, dried milk, or aged cheese, uh, these are very safe uh, and, and will continue to be safe for, for months because they were produced before the accident. Um, the um, other principle besides diluting the uh, isotopes is to increase your uh, resistance to stress and radiation. And it happened that my very first newsletter uh, 30 years ago was on radiation resistance and uh, what to do in case of a nuclear accident. And uh, at that time... I reviewed a couple thousand research articles, both from the, the old AEC, uh, Atomic Energy Commission research, and a lot of it from the Soviet research. And uh, the uh, main conclusions that I found were that increasing the metabolic rate, uh, which uh, causes cells to uh, retain magnesium, Magnesium is very important in repairing cell damage, and uh, the faster the metabolic rate is, uh, generally the uh, more damage can be repaired before it, it uh, uh, becomes established uh, as a, a stress factor in the organism. Um, the um, high metabolic rate produces carbon dioxide, which uh, has a, an antioxidant, anti-stress effect all through the organism. So uh, if you keep your metabolic rate up and eat a, a balanced diet, your tissue's going to retain the magnesium it needs out of the food and uh, produce the carbon dioxide it needs, assuming that you're getting adequate protein, sugar, fat, vitamins, and a balance of minerals. So um, you mentioned to me earlier that there there are ways and foods that we can eat to keep our metabolic rate high as, as along with taking thyroid. So um, can you um, expand on what types of sugars and fats and proteins we should be um, ingesting? Uh, the um, ideal fat is coconut oil because the short chain saturated fatty acids uh, compete with the uh, other fats that normally are slowing metabolism and oxidative metabolism. And so for a couple hours, 
after you eat uh, more or less a, a tablespoon of coconut oil per meal for a couple hours your metabolic rate is increased producing more carbon dioxide and accelerating uh, cell repair processes and uh, the, the um, fruits that come from the tropics uh, the farther south the fruit is grown uh, the longer it will uh, be free of of this high latitude Japanese uh, radiation uh, so oranges grown in in Mexico Brazil and Florida are still going to be pretty pure in terms of radiation uh, for for a very long time and the um, the sugar and the minerals in in oranges are uh, very uh, close to what we need so um, uh, coconut oil orange juice and milk as a good source of calcium uh, during the uh, atmospheric bomb tests in the 50s and 60s I got interested in the uh, the study the government was doing or uh, uh, they were doing it secretly before it became public for a long time but they were collecting uh, baby teeth from around the world uh, to uh, measure uh, the fallout effects and uh, the government began recommending that people not drink milk because milk uh, was contaminated with the strontium which was taken up along with the calcium but I looked at the actual analysis of the food value as well as the uh, isotope content of vegetables and found that a person getting their nutrition from vegetables was going to have about five times uh, higher exposure to strontium-90 than people who got their nutrition primarily from milk and cheese because the cows were uh, able to concentrate the calcium and uh, filter out a little more of the uh, strontium than the uh, vegetables were doing. Yeah, you mentioned to me that in, in order to get enough calcium to protect against your body's own bone destruction, <clears throat> that you would have to drink one to two quarts and the same amount of, uh, and, and eat some cheese daily, and that same amount of calcium from green leafy vegetables would be about three pounds of spinach per day. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. And then the, and the fact that you're eating so much spinach that could have been contaminated with strontium, you'd actually be exposing yourself to much higher levels of strontium. Yeah. And um, what can you talk to us about what you'd recommend for elimination methods, like if we are breathing in or ingesting uh, radioactive particles, what's the best uh, um, elimination method you find to take? Because I know there's a lot of stuff on the Internet about all these different things you can take that will help bind the radioactive particles, but what do you recommend, Dr. Pete? Well, once it gets into your digestive system, uh, if it's uh, coming in incorporated in the food, there's really no way to sort it out. But if it's um, uh, in the water, for example, uh, if you can uh, just keep a lot of fiber flowing through your system, like uh, eating uh, fruit that you know isn't contaminated, um, carrots, for example, if, if you know that they're safely uh, grown uncontaminated, uh, will sweep the, the material through your intestine, uh, uh, preventing... Uh, the absorption of some nutrients at the same time, but uh, uh, if you're exposed to uh, a very concentrated uh, dose from a, a rain or something, it's better to uh, go hungry uh, for a little while while sweeping out your intestine. So w um, would you consider, just to kind of go back a little bit here, but would you consider the the radiation that we might have been exposed to thus far um, dangerous enough to avoid uh, drinking any milk and eating any vegetables from California and oh, Oregon? Oh, no, not yet. Not uh, yet. Um, if it becomes, uh, if the reactors uh, start burning fuel rods, uh, someone is likely to leak the information mm -hmm. in time that 
that people can take precautions. But uh, if it reached the uh, proportions of Chernobyl, uh, then it would take extreme measures uh, for a very long time uh, using only stored uh, antique food. Uh, the older food um, would become more valuable. So it sounds like we need to start stocking up on sugar and dried milk powder. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, other things that can help um, move things along in the intestine are li- uh, all the various liver herbs and cascara bark powder. That all speeds intestinal transit time. But I did want to ask you, Dr. Pete, there's a lot of uh, hype around people using potassium iodide already and it's, it's selling out of the stores and people using kelp. And can you please explain to our listeners how taking kelp or the potassium iodide supplement would help protect them against a high amount of uh, radioactive iodine in our environment? Um, it, it simply dilutes the radioactive isotope when you're uh, taking in a lot of old, stable iodine. It, uh, it saturates your thyroid. And your thyroid uh, shuts down and stops taking up any more. And so uh, you can add uh, radioactive iodine to a saturated person, and it uh, just gradually washes out without concentrating at a very high level in the thyroid. But if a person is uh, deficient in iodine, almost all of it will, uh, once it gets into the bloodstream, it'll stick in the thyroid gland and give an extremely high uh, dose to the gland and even more so to a developing uh, embryo's uh, thyroid gland. The fetus will uh, concentrate even more than the mother's uh, thyroid. Uh, Go ahead. ahead. The the potassium iodide is is very good protection, uh, but only from the damage to the thyroid gland. It doesn't do anything at all to protect against the other isotopes or the other uh, tissues of the body, right. as some people are are saying on the internet. Right. Uh, in fact, it probably, if you took it uh, more than enough to saturate your tissues, uh, the um, Center for Disease Control uh, advocates 160 milligrams one dose. Uh, if you took that much every day for a long time, uh, your thyroid gland would uh, shut down. Uh, your metabolism would slow down and you would, all of your defensive uh, reactions would uh, slow down so you would become more susceptible to injury throughout the rest of your body. So you're not recommending that people take any kelp powder or potassium iodide at this current level? Uh, no, just um, the minimum requirement is only 150 or 200 micrograms and even one milligram uh, per day continued for a very long time uh, increases the risk of damage to the thyroid gland. Thyroiditis uh, appears increasingly when people eat just a, a milligram of iodine or more. And do you know the measurements on how much is in kelp powder? How many milligrams is in a teaspoon of kelp or a half a teaspoon of kelp? Uh, no, but probably a half teaspoon. Uh, uh, I think people have calculated that it would take an ounce to be equal to the Center for Disease Control amount, but uh, probably a half teaspoon is adequate to saturate most people. But only once we have more information saying there is actually elevated levels of radioactive iodine in our environment? Yeah, uh, one half teaspoon dose isn't going to hurt anyone, but uh, you don't want to do that every day for a long time. Andrew, did you have a question? Uh, no, I, just, I think what was, uh, uh, like, like you were saying, Sarah, the, uh, the rush on buying potassium iodide uh, was pretty apparent. I know <clears throat> I saw plenty of information regarding that. And um, the thing with, the thing with uh, iodine, uh, if I'm right in saying this, Dr. Pete, is that the uh, radioactive iodine 
that was present in Chernobyl uh, was also responsible for the big increase in thyroid cancers. And now you're saying that pregnant women are actually more susceptible even than young children. Um, yeah, Ernest Sternglass, um, who um, got interested in the issue uh, when they were doing atmospheric uh, bomb tests, um, the, the government timed their bomb tests in Nevada so that the wind wasn't blowing towards the big California cities. They wanted all of the fallout to go into Utah, and uh, uh, the population of Utah uh, suffered uh, the most from uh, autoimmune diseases and cancer and uh, other diseases. But occasionally, the uh, rainfall would be so light that uh, no fallout would come down until it got to the East Coast, and uh, one of these times, Ernest Sternglass had his students uh, studying uh, how to use their Geiger counters, and uh, they found that uh, there was a terrific amount of radiation at the university, uh, which the government hadn't mentioned to anyone, mm -hmm. and uh, that got him studying it and paying attention to how dishonest the U.S. Public Health Service and Atomic Energy Commission and state public health officials were. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, he showed that um, probably there were tens of thousands of miscarriages and uh, um, the babies that survived a very high percentage uh, were hypothyroid. Even there was an epidemic of babies born without their thyroid glands. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, as long as they were being breastfed, uh, the mother's thyroid was um, entering the milk at a high enough level to uh, uh, cover up the symptoms. So as soon as they were weaned, uh, they were discovered not to have thyroid glands. Going back, going back to uh, cover-ups or suppression of information, I found it quite interesting from the moment the tsunami happened and the... Uh, evolving situation that Fukushima uh, was passing day by day with ever increasing explosions etc. That, that I found the most information funnily enough coming from Russia today uh, that news agency there I think probably not suppressed so much by the West as the BBC even. I found the BBC's coverage was pretty good but I found Russia's today uh, their coverage was pretty excellent and they they had the most up to date information I presume because the time zone they were much more on a par with Japan uh, so in the waking hours they were picking up the information as soon as it was being re released from sources in Japan um, but I wonder what would be uh, the best I guess to keep monitoring Russia today, but the best source for people in America to be able to find out more uh, about local um, local results with real time and real real figures to show what actually is in the environment. I wonder what would be the best way to go about doing that. Um, I don't remember the uh, web address, but there is a good nuclear uh, site and basically an anti-nuclear power site that is getting uh, up-to-date information. Right. So the other thing was I was <laughs> I was looking on eBay at Geiger counters of all things just to see you know they're out there there's hundreds of them on eBay and uh, they're not expensive and I think a lot of them are kind of post uh, post Cold War uh, post Three Mile Island so the uh, getting hold of a, a Geiger counter to actually do some physical measurements yourself uh, for a while uh, the internet uh, stores were uh, selling old Soviet. Uh, Geiger counters that uh, for about $15 uh -huh. and uh, uh, someone just told me that uh, she, she and her neighbor had bought uh, two uh, at $35 and as soon as the radiation yeah. scare hit the price went up to 75 <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay because I, I, I saw them on eBay and they were going for about 150 to $200 and uh, these were uh, I forget the, I can get hold of the information pretty quick but they were all fairly similar, they were kind of bright yellow and uh, uh, maybe about the size of an egg carton 
Yeah. So I'm actually holding mine right here, which I got on the internet. Oh, okay. Uh, I could have paid anywhere. You know, I I got the cheapest basically, which cost me about two hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Uh, I did see even cheaper ones other places, but the really good expensive ones cost ten to twenty thousand dollars. And the little booklet I got with this, you know, I can tell some kinds of radiation from other kinds, but I basically have it beeping, and I got it to check out both industrial metals and phosphate mm-hmm. fertilizers, and yeah. I did find some things which are definitely hot by yeah, yeah, mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's not beeping much more than normal right now, though. <laughs> Good. All right, let's get back Thanks to some of, those, some of those things that people can Yeah, we do, do have to... a color on the line, but oh. I did want to at least go through a few more of the anti-radiation nutrients. Um, Dr. Pete, caffeine, there's lots of information out there about tea and coffee. And can you describe to us briefly what the nutrients are in the, caf- I mean, in the tea and the coffee and how caffeine helps to protect against radiation? Uh, coffee is a good source of magnesium and of some uh, B vitamins, niacin especially, and uh, the caffeine is anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. And so it, if you happen to have some uh, mobile isotopes uh, that are still in your bloodstream and going through your kidneys, uh, caffeine helps to flush them out faster and safely. It uh, has a, a slight chelating effect as well as anti-inflammatory. And, um, uh, yeah, ca- sorry, carry on. Um, the um, things that have an anti-estrogen effect as well as anti-inflammatory, uh, the um, radiation effect itself imitates estrogen in the body. Everything that estrogen does can be imitated by radiation, including making a, a rat go into estrus, for example. Uh, and the, the um, if you're in a high estrogen state, then you're uh, more susceptible to radiation injury. And uh, that's why progesterone and thyroid and caffeine, by uh, helping to lower estrogen and inflammation, are uh, protective against radiation too. So just to um, recap those, you said caffeine, coffee, because it contains a magnesium and B vitamins, progesterone to block the estrogenic effects of radiation, other antioxidants like vitamin E um, also blocks the effects of estrogen and helps with radiation, and vitamin C in orange juice and tropical fruits, um, vitamin A found in eggs and liver helps in the repair processes. I wanted to um, briefly ask you about the glutathione that that's been touted to help with radiation damages. Um, th- there's a lot of confusion around glutathione because um, anything that harms your cells turns on a defensive reaction and increases the glutathione. And uh, so a lot of uh, things that have exactly the wrong effect are being suggested on the basis of increasing glutathione, but uh, many harmful things by stimulating that defense reaction will increase glutathione, and taking a large dose of glutathione in itself, animal studies showed uh, that it could be carcinogenic to the liver uh, Mm -hmm. just by uh, starting free radical uh, reactions rather than stopping them. Are there anti-inflammatories that can help protect against radiation aspirin, of course, which comes from white willow bark. Well, not anymore, but originated from white willow bark. Also, ginkgo, turmeric, those are other herbal anti-inflammatories. Um, uh, various adaptogenic adrenal herbs, eleuthero root, American and Korean ginseng have been shown to help with radiation sickness. And uh, we mentioned the B vitamins already. I wanted you, Dr. Pete, to talk to us about um, animal liver, which contains... Uh, a lot of B vitamins and the fat soluble A, D, E, and K vitamins, and why um, it's contrary to popular opinion, it's actually less toxic than the other parts of the animal. Um, yeah, the liver is the main detoxifying organ. Uh, the kidneys and brain have some of the same detoxifying enzymes, but the liver is is where the great bulk of of detoxification happens. And uh, there have been studies in which uh, beef uh, were going into the slaughterhouse. Their urine, blood, uh, and uh, tissues were measured, and uh, the a, a large proportion of 
the animals, uh, more than a third, showed uh, chemical contamination in the blood and urine, and practically all of them had the same chemicals uh, in their fat and muscle tissues, the meats that are most popular, but only a very tiny proportion uh, still had any of the toxic chemicals left in their liver. Uh, for the first 24 hours after you're exposed to a, a insecticide, for example, it will uh, collect in the liver and, and be bound to a, a certain kind of uh, protein. But during this first day in which it's collecting at a high concentration in the liver, the liver begins destroying it. And after just about 24 hours, the liver has cleaned itself and then begins uh, the slow process of, of cleaning the blood as it uh, draws toxins out of the muscles and fat tissues. Uh, the fats are relatively inert, and so the highest uh, toxins accumulate there uh, over the years. And uh, so the, the fatty meats are uh, the most risky as far as the uh, chemical uh, poisonings go. The, the liver is the cleanest. Okay, good. Um, there's a caller on the line, so let's start taking the callers because they, they may well be one behind the other. Hi. Um, hello, fellow uh, downwinders of the vast nuclear corporate industrial empire. <laughs> uh, I've been watching the, the news and I saw maybe it was the website that Dr. Pete mentioned, uh, an anti or a nuclear information site. Uh, it was on the news. A couple of uh, um, programs had the plume coming from Japan, and it indicated that the very first uh, uh, place where it was hitting the West Coast was actually Cape Mendocino from about Eureka to Fort Bragg. That was like at 11 o'clock last night they were showing that map. So we're the initial uh, fallout point. Of, of that uh, particular plume. And I have a couple of questions concerning it. The first one before I forget, the, the first uh, the calling cleanser that you mentioned, I didn't quite catch the name of that. What was it again? Grated carrot. Great, raw oh, carrot. Sorry, once again? <clears throat> raw carrot salad, like raw oh, carrots. Oh, raw carrot. Okay. And yeah, then... I had a little static on the line when uh, on the radio when that, you had mentioned that. And I understand also garlic is supposed to um, help bring iodine into the system. Is that... Something that you're aware of? Dog speed? Oh, what was that? Garlic. Do you, um... Garlic. Oh, <coughs> um, I, it has some antioxidant effect, but uh, I don't think it has a big effect on iodine. Okay, and then this weekend we're trying to safeguard ourselves with uh, our potassium iodine salad, which is bananas and seaweed. Is there... Uh, I mean, if we don't really, you know, go out and eat a whole lot of it, I don't know what the flavor is, but it's got to be better than the tasteless <laughs> plutonium and uranium that's literally raining down on us. Um, is is there a cautionary amount that you would eat of some kind of uh, fruit slash sea salad like that that uh, would be reasonable to start maybe uh, implementing some protection? Dr. Pete, did you hear that um, question? Uh, the last part of it I couldn't hear. Okay, well... Uh, basically, he's uh, suggesting eating a banana and seaweed salad, so to oh. provide potassium. Uh, and well, uh, the seaweed, uh, kelp, and dulse, for example, or uh, sea organisms like uh, uh, shrimp and oysters and clams, uh, those are good sources of, of iodine. But, um, but the banana issue brings up an important aspect of radiation, which is uh, bananas are probably one of the richest food sources in uh, serotonin. And uh, uh, some uh, biologists, uh, Carmel Mothersill and Colin Seymour, for example, uh, have been uh, studying the effects of uh, low-level radiation on cell physiology and communication. And they find that at a very low level, uh, Ionizing radiation causes cells to produce serotonin, among other agents, that uh, even if you take the injured cells out of the organism or the culture dish, the water that they were in when they were injured 
uh, becomes equivalent to the radiation uh, for other cells. Uh, the same kind of genetic damage caused directly by the radiation can be caused by the uh, chemicals put into the environment by those injured cells. And serotonin at a level above uh, 20 nanograms per milliliter uh, is one of those uh, communicators of radiation damage. Uh, they, in one of their books, uh, have a, a study by uh, some of the biologists who worked with the Chernobyl victims, both the children who have been living in the region and the uh, people who survived working at the accident. And they find that the serum taken from these exposed people, 20 years after the accident, their serum separated from their blood components, added to another person's cells, caused radiation damage equivalent in those cells. And uh, since they identified uh, a very small amount of serotonin <clears throat> as one of the factors spreading this inflammation, uh, genetic destabilizing material, uh, I think it's good to avoid as many sources of serotonin as possible, especially bananas. Good. There wow, go. so when it said that somebody is going bananas, there's actually a pharma, um, pharmaceutical psychological aspect to that, it sounds like. Um, well, I guess I'll be adding raw carrots to our salad and uh, reducing the amount of bananas. Is there uh, any benefit to eating dried bananas to fresh bananas concerning the psychopharmaceutical aspects of the serotonin in there? Um, uh, there, I think um, shifting towards um, uh, gelatinous meats away from uh, muscle meats uh, would help to reduce the uh, uh, tendency of the tissues when, when inflamed to produce serotonin. A good balance of, of vitamins and minerals helps to uh, avoid excess serotonin production during inflammation, but uh, all of those inflammatory, anti-inflammatory things uh, that have been mentioned are uh, basically anti-serotonin. And just okay, and my final question on estrogenics or, um, concerning ingestion by men, I don't know if saw palmetto is one of those, but are there uh, anything, is there anything that maybe should be taken to preempt the estrogenic effect of the radionuclides um, as far as the difference between men ingesting them and women ingesting them, or is it at a point where maybe drinking water out of a plastic bottle with a bisphenol A is better than uh, dealing with the radionuclides that that might preempt it at least over the next couple of weeks? And thank you very much for the program. I'm going to release the line. Thank you for your call. Dr. Pete, did you hear that gentleman's Almost last... none of it. Okay, yeah, we have a little bit of feedback here. So he was um, asking about the anti-estrogenic, uh, what else could be taken at, uh, for, as, what else could men take that's anti-estrogen to help protect against the uh, radionucleotides, and also um, whether you would recommend people drink bottled water versus water from spring or well in the next several months. Given that the bottled water is a potential source of um, uh, estrogenic substances. I, I think a good filter uh, for well water is, mm -hmm. is adequate. Okay. And progesterone is um, very anti-estrogenic. And for men, uh, keeping the thyroid function high is the main thing. Um, aspirin and thyroid are able to inhibit the estrogen that's produced as a result of stress. Okay. I've actually just thought of something. And in, the, in the water filter, um, is the car, because we, we have water filters that we run our, our water through, and I know that the core of the filter is a, is a carbon, a pleated carbon core. Is that carbon there? Is that able to sequester things like iodine if it was in the water? Um, yeah, I think uh, carbon catches uh, almost any 
any solid will absorb to right. activated charcoal. Right. Okay, good. All right, there's two more callers on the line, so let's take the uh, take the next one. You're on the air. Hello. Hi, you're on the air. Um, well, the brown seaweeds like wakame and kombu, especially kombu, are high in sodium sodium alginate, and they're supposed to take all heavy metals and radioactivity out of your body, just not the iodine. So, don't you think they would be good? Did you hear that, Dr. Pete? Um, yeah, yeah, if you if they pass through your intestine. Well, yes, eating them. Uh, yeah, they they aren't going to um, be any more effective than uh, good cellulose. Uh, anything indigestible that stimulates your intestine uh, will sweep Even out. Even with the sodium alginate. Uh, well, the trouble is that alginate is um, very dangerously allergenic for many people. So I wouldn't. I recommend it unless you are sure that you're not sensitive to it because... I don't know one person that eats the uh, kombu that's ever had an allergy to it. Um, yeah, yeah uh, dental patients have, have died and, and dental students, a uh, very high proportion of the dental students working with alginate to make molds, uh, surprisingly healthy well, that's a concentrate that they made, to... not a whole food product. Um, well, it, carrageenan is somewhat worse, but um, the um, alginate itself uh, has the potential to be dangerously allergenic. Okay. I think you. in light of um, raw carrots being so absorptive in the intestinal tract, and non-digestible, meaning that if they were contaminated themselves, when you eat them, you're not going to be absorbing heavy metals. And when they um, wash through your intestinal tract, they're going to be absorbing potential heavy metals and radioactive um, particles. Oh, well, I think carrots are a good idea, but so is uh, seaweed, I think. Well, see, it's taking too much seaweed will actually lower your metabolic rate and well, make too you... too much, yes. Well, even eating it daily is enough. It doesn't, it doesn't take that, it doesn't take that much in order to start suppressing the thyroid. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, there's another caller on the line. You're on the air. Oh, hello. Yes. What I recommend, uh, using is, um, mushrooms. Uh, uh, there's this mushroom right around here called the turkey tail, Tremedes versicolor. And this one is actually, in Asia, is used as an anti-cancer drug because it has a high-quality qu protein-bound polysaccharide, which is very discovered very effective in cancer and also in treated, uh, treating cancer patients that had chemotherapy in their uh, survival rates and stuff. It also has other uh, qualities that are free radical oxidizing compounds and all kinds of things like that. And other mushrooms are the same quality, which are called polypore mushrooms, which is the riche is one, mm -hmm. and these big, thick conks that grow like wood-like look looking mushrooms. Uh -huh. And these mushrooms have been studied in Japan and around and uh, have been proven to uh, been, uh, produce, you know, the T-cell production and, uh, and what is that, interleukin? production mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you, if you know anything about that uh, Dr. P how how, uh, how much do you know about those particular fungi oh what was the name of the well he mentioned the things like uh, the uh, polyphores the um... but turkey tail is the one that grows around here yeah. it's the most common and uh, I make a tea from it just by drying it in dust in a powder okay do you know do you know that uh, fungi it's like the most, it actually is the most studied uh, fungi in the world as far as medicinal. Okay. It's Are you t uh, speaking about reishi? No, no it's about related to reishi. It's also a polypore mushroom. It's a thick mushroom that, uh, around here, if you look on these trees, there's these, just layers of these mushrooms. They're like tri-colored mushrooms. They're called turkey tails. They go like green and brown and with a white edge. And they grow on all like the oak trees, the maple, all basically hardwood trees. And they're the most common mushroom probably in the world. They grow in the most, from boreal forest to tropical forest. And in every state in the Union except for, I think, Nevada or something. I think a lot of the... Um... And they've been studied all over the world. And they, they actually make this uh, uh, 
commercial uh, thing it called Crestin. It's actually called the anti-cancer drug in Asia. Okay, I've I've, I've not heard of it, but okay. uh -huh. I, I think a lot of the mushrooms have the polysaccharides that are active yeah. at um, absorbing a lot of things from the, the gastrointestinal tract. Right, and that's what I'm saying. They they use them in chemotherapy and stuff like that. So I'm just saying that. Uh, to, uh, well, they also have um, um, you know, for uh, other types of uh, things besides the uh, antioxidizing compounds. But uh, so I always take mushrooms anyway. I'm a big fan of them, and I would recommend that people use this mushroom. <laughs> it's growing right on it. On the, you look under your oak tree, your apple tree, your uh, bay tree over here on the ground, and you look at the dead branches, and you see it's covered with these mushrooms. All right. They're very dry. <laughs> they're not. A, they're they're dry mushroom. All right. And that is called the turkey tail. Okay. Well, people can people can check that out on the uh, on the internet and find out some more about yes, it. it is I'm a, I'm not too familiar with it. Yeah. Um, and it is, it is like it has been uh, used with reche. Okay, I'm familiar yeah. with Reishi. Yeah. yeah, and that's another one of the probably. And the other one that around here is, uh, are those, you ever see those mushrooms that are like, they look like a piece of wood, real heavy, thick things growing off of a tree? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen They're those. They're called conks, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And that one too has been, uh, has the same quality. Okay. Anything, All right. Always. Okay. Well, thank you for your call. Right. I know. I know there's a couple of other people probably want to get a question in. So, uh, let's take the next caller. Hello. Hi. You're on the air. All right. So uh, I have a great website. The EPA has revamped for the general public, so we can easily access the graphical representation of the raw data mm -hmm. of the monitoring sites along the west coast. Okay. And that is. So you can see the actual gamma and beta radiation levels. What's the uh, name of the site? What's hourly? The, what's the website? Okay, here it comes. You guys ready? Yep. I know people are waiting. Yep. Uh, World Wide Web, epa.gov, backslash Japan 2011, backslash R-E-R-T, backslash radnet, R-A-D-N-E-T, okay. hyphen, data.html okay good well maybe we'll get, get all that i wrote yeah. it all down <clears throat> so okay you... great <laughs> okay let's try it <laughs> it's really handy i already looked at it we haven't seen anything unusual anywhere yet okay so, okay it was just the one thing in that department after 2011 forward slash r-e-r-t you said uh japan 2011 slash r-e-r-t right okay slash radnet okay hyphen data.html Okay, good. Well, people can go check that website out and then uh, see how that compares to the CTBTO uh, information, especially the one that was published from Vienna uh, yeah. on Thursday. Thank you for that, your call. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you for okay. Uh, having the discussion. Okay, thank you. Good night. Okay, bye. Are there oh. any more callers yes, online? Yes, there is. Okay, good. Okay. Go ahead. You're on the air? Yes, I was wondering about using uh, D-ribose to raise the metabolic rate. Okay. Dr. Pete, did you hear that question? Uh, D-ribose? Yeah. D-ribose. Um, I think the, the main risk is that uh, those things uh, produced industrially very often have contaminants that, that no one knows about or mentions on the labels, and uh, so you have to be very cautious that you don't have an allergic reaction to any of those semi-purified chemicals. Okay, there, there we go. Was that was that was that the only question? Okay, all right. I think they I think they've dropped up anyway. Was there any more callers on the line? Okay, so let's go back to uh, the uh, useful things and that people can do. Given that there is an increase in uh, radioactive contamination, uh, if that p p plays out, I think particularly the thing that I'm thinking about, Doctor Pete, is uh, if if that third reactor, the mixed oxide fuel reactor, actually becomes uh, a fire or the fuel rods in this in the pools actually become combusted and there are release of that that fuel the plutonium particularly is the is the dangerous the very dangerous and very long half-life isotope isn't it yeah at that point i think people should either if they can't move to bolivia they should 
think about building a giant greenhouse and uh, getting some goats and chickens to live in the <laughs> greenhouse with them. Uh huh. Yeah, well, I hope it doesn't come to that for sure. It, I think there's one more caller on the line, so let's take this caller. Hello. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Thank you. Um, I did come in late, so I'm sorry if I missed the answer, but, um, oh, you were talking about, um, various vitamins and their... Could you turn your, could you turn your radio yeah, down? Sorry. I'm sorry. I was trying yeah. to step away with Okay. Um, you were there talking you about various vitamins and are you suggesting only get those from a whole food or what about supplements from a reputable company like Rainbow Light or something like that? Well, I think Dr. Pete's always recommending fresh fruits and, uh, so but Dr. Pete. Uh, yeah, for an emergency, uh, like just for a period of two or three weeks, well, the cloud passes over. I think it it could be, uh, for most people, it could be helpful to take a, a B complex supplement mm -hmm. and uh, to um, eat extra eggs and and milk and uh, uh, very nutrient rich foods. Uh, but a B vitamin supplement is uh, pretty safe and helps to. Uh, keep a maximal rate of metabolism uh, supported. Okay, did, did you, uh, you heard that okay? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay. Um, and so will there be a place to go to hear the whole um, show tonight? Since I yeah, you can, you can pick it up online um, at uh, kmud.org. Okay. And then uh, what you do is you... And then go to the audio archives, yeah. Oh, okay. And then under audio archives, you'll find the third Friday of each month, there will be a Friday night talk, it's called. It's from 7 till 8 p.m. Yeah, just search via the date. Okay. Which today is March 18th. Yeah, so yeah. Go, to, go to Friday night talk and it's all there. Excellent. It's been a great show. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now, Thanks for your call. Okay, yeah, I know we've got five minutes to the hour of eight o'clock, so unfortunately it's coming to an end. Was, were there any more callers on? No, okay, there's no more callers, so let's... Okay, so Dr. Pete, if um, cesium, the half-life is 30 years, and it's supposedly heavier than iodine, do you think it's true that more is likely to fall out over the Pacific Ocean before it gets here, or I wonder if there's even sites showing that it is here? Um, I... Yeah, I think there would be a little bit of everything that was produced. Um, they would, there, there would be only a very slight difference in right. uh, fallout in the rainfall. Yeah. And going back to potassium, I know that caller was asking about bananas, but orange juice is very rich in potassium, and potassium will also help your body pick up less cesium, like the um, kelp will help your, the iodine in the kelp will help your body pick up less radioactive iodine. Um, yeah. Um, Fifty years ago, I proposed that uh, the, the safe thing would be to um, have industrial-sized greenhouses, which um, during, if they were going to keep doing the atmospheric bomb tests, uh, I suggested that uh, all vegetables should be grown in uh, either petroleum or coal-fired uh, greenhouses providing fossil carbon dioxide to avoid the uh, radioactive carbon isotope from the fallout and uh, using limestone as the safe source of calcium for fertilizer and uh, uh, other uh, fossil minerals uh, to um, give the complete uh, non-radioactive uh, food source for the, the uh, plants and, and animals that were uh, being used for food. Uh, but uh, by 1963, the uh, government had agreed to stop testing in the atmosphere. Uh, one of the reasons that I did my newsletter in 1981 on radiation protection was that uh, beginning with that huge burst of uh, atmospheric fallout from the bomb tests in 1963, uh, the, um, the scores, all kinds of indicators of intelligence, uh, the babies born in uh, nine months 
after 1963's uh, burst of atmospheric tests, their uh, SAT scores uh, were showing up in 1981 as the lowest of history. And uh, it turned out uh, people were arguing that it was because more uh, poor students were taking the test, but actually it was the high-scoring people who were uh, eliminated from the SAT scores. The high scores decreased progressively uh, in, in proportion to the amount of fallout being produced by the bombs. Okay, we're going to have to we're going to have to call it a night, Doctor Pete. I'm afraid I'd love to hear more, and I know a lot of other people would, but it's uh, one minute to eight o'clock now, so we've got to stop it at eight. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. I would really appreciate everything you have to offer. For well, more information, you can visit www.raypete.com, and you can reach us toll free eight 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 nine two six four three seven two or locally nine eight six nine five zero six. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next month. Thank you. Good night.